Well, not in the hangar. I'm in my workshop, and I've been doing a lot of work in my workshop. It's really, really messy, so um, uh, don't comment on the mess. I promise I'm going to be cleaning it up real soon because I'm starting to um, not be able to find things. You know how it is. When you start getting working on things, tools and parts and junk just kind of piles up. And that's what's happened here in my little workshop, uh, my ham shack. Uh, what I'm doing today, uh, tiny tack. I had to order a new one um, because the tiny tack battery in my Challenger 2 died. So I figured, okay, the tiny tack that I have, I'm going to take it apart. See what makes it tick. And I'm going to see if I can change the battery on it. And um, so, yeah, um, follow along. Uh, I've already opened it up. Uh, it actually wasn't that hard to cut open the backside and expose the uh, rubber stuff. A lot of other videos of people doing that. But I'm just going to show you what I'm doing to uh, make it work, and we'll see if it works. Going to be a lot of chopping and editing on this, but that's okay. Thanks for following along. This is going to be really, really, really short because it's just on the tiny tack right now. Uh, so, Peter Pat, let's get at her. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it exposed. That's the tab, the two tabs, um, these um, pieces here, uh, that uh, the little battery that was in there was spot welded to, and I'm just spot welding it. And I'm using my little pan of ice here to hold it. So let's just do one more quick spot weld here, and there we go. And that does it for that side okay this was the original battery that was in there okay it is a 2325 a CR 2325 I don't have a CR 2325 it's a 3 volt lithium so I checked the specs on this this is 160 milliamp hour 3 volt lithium okay it's rather thin there um, so I decided I'm going to put in really, really common CR2032. Same voltage, but this one has about 240 milliamp hours. So it actually has more power. It's a little bit thicker. Not sure why they use that particular battery. Probably because it's what they had on hand. So anyways, I've spot welded the negative side on there, which is that right there. And now I'm going to fold this thing down like this kind of squeeze it in the position and then fold this positive flap over. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the vise to hold it. Just so that I can let go of it and not too tight but snug enough. Alright, so battery goes down. This goes over top. You got to sort of push it hard. Now, get my little spot weldy thingy here that I've got. And I've got it set to automatic. It's about a half second delay. And I'm going to push... Oh, oh, oh. Maybe I should... Uh, I got a little bend in here, so I'm going to use this to push that bend right down hard. And then, there, one spot weld. Ooh, that's hot. Two. Whoa, that really, <laughs> it, uh, it was rather forceful that time. That's all right. And three. There we go. Okay. Three spot welds and <laughs> they're they're good. <laughs> hey, this thing was uh, not working. It was going to be thrown out. Now let's see. Oh, look at that! It works. Tiny Tack is alive. <laughs> Go figure. Alrighty. So all I would have to do is is put some sealant in here. Just keep this thing from floating around too much. Um, I mean, I could re-glue this rubber 
in here a bit I suppose but or just fill it with uh, with uh, silicone just to keep it from vibrating and then uh, maybe sand this down a bit and sand this down a little bit and um, glue it back together and there you go there's a working tiny tack again so um, yeah I don't think there's any push buttons on this this one no I don't believe this one has doesn't has no dimples that kind of stuff I think it's just straight tiny tack whatever um, okay um, maybe it's a magnet you gotta use for these things I don't know I'll have to read the instructions on these tiny tacks to find out if there's a way to change settings on this sometimes they put a little uh, reed switch underneath here that a magnet will trigger um, so would this thing be a hundred percent waterproof again well if I glued it properly you know back down again it, it would will this operate and work we of course it will you know and what did it cost me well it cost me the price of a 2032 battery and I buy those in bulk so that runs about maybe you know um, I think I it works up like a, about a buck and a half or a battery and then some time now some of you might be out looking at that little spot welding thing that I got here and um, this is a very inexpensive let me let me get this thing touching it there get this thing set up and, and, and show you I'm holding one lead because I don't want it to short against the other one because I don't want it to spot well together so this is let's get this camera up a bit and over the side see if it's in that okay what that's telling you is that I get 12.7 volts in the battery and I've got it set for I have no idea what 100 means um, it, they say gear it's translated from Chinese and I have no idea there's three settings on it one is do you want to delay when you put the probes down or do you want it to weld instantly um, the second one is how intense do you want it you know which would probably mean how many of these valves will be turned on to how much current goes through I've got it set for number three the highest because number one and number two I could peel that when I did the test on it I could peel the, uh, the, the, the you know connection off number three really hits it hard I think number of this number here this 100 is is um, maybe it's a dwell time how long does it stay on there I don't know I'm gonna play with it a little bit I, I only got it a little while ago and uh, this is actually the first real world that I've done with it I've just played with it a bit and um, I think it costs 25 bucks or something I don't know I'm using a rather large and we turn this thing off you press this button hold it and turns off there you go now you can't shorten the thing up I'm just using an old uh, a used gel cell battery 35 amp hour 12 volt gel cell works great um, oh yeah it's it's got more than enough power behind it uh, the thing with these is that the uh, it really relies heavily on what power source you give it if you put a small battery well the only uh, it'll only transfer the amperage of the battery can since this is a 35 amp battery that means that I, it can deliver up up to possibly 35 amps at 12 volts on these probes which is quite a bit and it hits it with a quick shot and that's what does your spot welding and uh, that's it so anyways that's that's it for now oh, oh, let me get this camera work better oh, camera man. okay take those glasses off because I don't need to look gross anymore um yeah that's it uh, not much for an update uh, I'm gonna do a little editing cutting this keep me a little bit shorter that kind of stuff but uh, that's it just now my tiny tech works again am I gonna put the new one in the airplane or I'm gonna put this one back in well the new one that I got coming in doesn't have the really long cable on it because uh, the engine is at the back and the tiny tanks at the front so I might actually stick this one right back in why not it did lose all memory uh, this had 135 hours on it when I bought the aircraft and showed 135 hours of time on it so in the logbook in the maintenance logbook of this uh, of my Challenger 2 I'm going to be marking on there that the tiny tack battery was replaced and the display showed 135 hours and then I'm going to go back on um, actually no my uh, my uh, GRT EFIS 
has a runtime clock on it as well, and it's been recording the runtime that I've been doing in the hangar, you know, when I did the engine startup, that kind of stuff. So that in there. So I need to add that to it, and I'll make that a, a note in the maintenance log that that I've, uh, I've got this many hours based on the EFIS, and then the tiny tack will be reinstalled and it's at zero. So just got to document that uh, for my purposes and, and for anybody else's purposes. But uh, yeah, I just want to keep track of, uh, of these things as well. Uh, so I'm assuming that this was installed when the aircraft was built, which means that the original battery lasted a very, very long time. I don't know. I do know that's the original engine. So it's quite possible that the airframe only has about 135 hours on it. And that kind of sounds right from the fellow that I bought it from and um, from what he told me and from the, what entries were made in the maintenance logbook originally. Um, so the engine and the airframe have about the same air, you know, hours on it. Uh, so I'm going to go with that. Again, the documentation in the maintenance logbook of the airplane, which was kept up, uh, shows 134, 135 hours uh, on the airframe and engine. So anyways, that's it. Tiny attack update. And uh, it is working again. And... Um, um, just a quick battery replacement. So if you got one of these and you don't want to spend, I don't know, 80 bucks or 60 bucks or it is for a new one, um, and it's for an experimental, or if you've got it on your lawnmower <laughs> or something because a lot of people use it for other things, um, yeah. I wish they made the batteries replaceable on these things. I mean, if they were user replaceable, yeah, I would be much happier. So technically they're not user replaceable unless you're like me and you don't observe those restrictions. So, that's it. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, uh, and because uh, it really does help. I'm over 400 subscribers now. What can I get to 1,000 by the end of the summertime? Well, maybe when I finally get the Challenger in the air flying, uh, it'll hit 1,000. That'd be great. Uh, other than that, that's it for now. Uh, sorry about not having too many updates. You know, all it's work and real life gets in the way, so. Um, been out of town a lot, and um, so, but I'll every time I do something, I will film it and let you guys know. <sighs> See you later, uh, and next time it'll may, might be in the hangar too. So keep your stick on the ice. Bye for now.